In this video lecture, I will demonstrate you how to develop a C program for 8051 microcontroller to perform data transfer from source to destination. In source memory locations, some data would be stored and that block of data is to be transferred or is to be copied from those source locations into destination location. This program is also called as block transfer program. And here it is assumed that the memory used is internal data memory that is internal RAM is used as a source memory locations as well as destination memory location. Source memory block is shown here and we are going to assume that 5 8-bit numbers are stored in 5 internal consecutive RAM locations. Those numbers are 11H, 22H, 33H, 44H, 55H. The numbers can be any numbers and these five numbers they are to be transferred from these five continuous source block locations to destination block locations. Here what I mean to say is that the first number which is 11H it is to be copied to first location of destination block. Similarly the second number from source block is to be moved or copied to second location in destination block. Third number is to be copied to third uh, location of uh, destination block. Fourth number is to be copied to fourth location of destination block and the last that is the fifth number is to be copied from fifth location of source block to fifth location of destination block. So this is what I want to do by using a C program. At the end of the program the destination block should look like this. So all five numbers in source block are copied into destination block. So this is to be done by using the C program for 8051 microcontroller. Now as we know that every C program of 8051 microcontroller begins with inclusion of header file that is reg51.h. This header file will store the definition of all special function registers of 8051 microcontroller. Now remember that inclusion of header file is optional. If you are using special function register names in your program, then it is compulsory to include this uh, header file. Otherwise, it is optional. But as a practice, I have written it as a compulsory statement. Then the main function is declared. This void indicates return type of main. Void means main is going to return no value. And this void which is written inside the round bracket, it is the parameter. So main is not going to accept any parameter from other function. That's why this void is written. The body of main will start with the curly braces. Now before writing the first statement, now let me tell you, now what we want to do? We want to copy the five numbers from source block to destination block. Now source block means five memory locations which are continuous in manner. Destination block means again, five internal RAM locations which are consecutive in nature. In C language, there is a concept of array. Now, what does array say? That array is defined as it is a set of elements of similar data types. Means here, all the elements right from 11H to 55H, they are again of same data type. They are again of 8-bit in nature. They are unsigned character in nature and they are stored in con continuous memory location. So from C perspective or from C language point of view, I can say that this is array of five elements. Similarly, these five elements are to be copied into destination block, which is again having the same nature. Five continuous memory locations are to be used. And again, the type of data which I'm going to copy is the same as that of source. So this will be the second array. So in program, what I will do, I will declare two different arrays. I will call this array where five numbers are already there as a source array and I will call the second array as a destination array where these five numbers are to be copied after the execution of the program. So the first statement is declaration of source array. The numbers stored in source array, they are of unsigned character. Unsigned character means I can have the value of those numbers from 00H to FFH. That's why unsigned character data uh, type is taken. And the name of the array is written as source. It is followed by 
square bracket and inside the square bracket size of the array is to be written now in example what i have said that i want to copy 5 8 bit number that's why the size of array is taken as 5 if you don't know the size of the array then you can put this uh, square bracket as empty also but as i know the size in advance so i have put the 5 here and i also know the numbers that those five numbers are 11 22 33 44 and 55 in hexadecimal and as the hexadecimal numbers are there 0x prefix is written before each number 0x indicates that the numbers are in hexadecimal the other way of doing this is you can write 11h as 11 followed by capital h you can adopt any one method so five different numbers they are separated by comma and they are enclosed in the curly braces so this way of writing is initialization of array with five elements initialization of array means i have declared the array whose name is source and i have also loaded five locations of array with these five eight bit numbers that's why i say that i have declared and initialized the array and semicolon as usual is the terminating uh, terminating for the declaration one more array is required and that array is the destination array so i will declare one more array whose name is destination again the data type is same unsigned character and of course the size is also going to be same because these same five numbers are to be copied into destination and obviously i have not initialized it to anything because after execution these five locations would be copied from source to destination now what would be the third statement now what i want to do again i will go to the previous diagram i will copy the numbers from source array to destination array one by one means i cannot copy all five numbers at once first i will copy 11 then i will copy 22 then i will copy the third number 33 I will copy the fourth number 44 and then I will copy the last number that is fifth number 55. Now these numbers are stored in array and in array in order to identify the position of the number we have something called as index of array. So when I say that first number in array it means that the number stored at index 0. Similarly the second number is stored at index 1 third number is stored at index 2, fourth number is stored at index 3 and the last that is fifth number is stored at index 4. So the another method of identifying the first number is the, in, the number stored at index 0 or I can say that the second number 22 is nothing but the number stored in source array having index 1. So this is the way of identifying the array element same, same is the case with the destination array the first location have index 0 second has the index of 1 third has the index of 2 fourth location has the index of 4 and fifth location has the index of 4 so this concept will be used while doing the programming so as i have already told you that i cannot copy all five elements at once i have to copy them one by one and for that purpose i will require a variable and that variable will first point to the index 0 once this l1 gets copied then it will be incremented by 1 and that index will be pointed to 1 then 22 will be copied then it will again further incremented by 1 it will point to the 2 then 33 location uh, 33 number will be copied in 33 uh, third um, uh, location of destination again the index will be incremented by 1 so that it will have the value of 3 so fourth number will be copied from source to destination and finally it will have the index of 4 so that it will copy to the fifth number and that fifth number will get copied to the fifth memory location of destination block so this concept can be used in our program and to store the index I will require one more variable and that variable is declared as a unsigned character i i is the name of variable which will point to the index of that array one by one it will point from 0 to 4 
Now, as you are done with the declaration part, the next thing is what activity we are going to do. We are taking the first number from source array and we are shifting or copying it to the first position of destination array. Then we are taking second number from source array. We are copying it to the second location of destination array. This activity will be repeated for five times. Why five times? Because there are five elements. So whenever we are repeating a certain activity number of times, then in that case, in C language, we have something called as loops. So where do we use loop in C language? In C language, we use loops when we have to repeat a certain activity number of times. There are different types of loop like while loop, do while loop, for loop. You can use any loop, but for is the best choice here. Because in one line, you can do the initialization, condition checking and increment part. So here, I is initialized with value zero. Why it is initialized with zero? Because the first number in an array has the index of zero. That's why it is initialized with zero. Now, what is the condition? We have to repeat the loop as long as value of I is less than five. Less than five means it is up to four. Now, why less than five? Because the last element in the array has index of four. That's why I have taken it as a less than five. Less than five means up to four. And with each copying of each number, I will go to the next location. So I have to increment the index by one. That's why this third uh, statement is written I plus plus. Initially value of I will be zero. Then it will check the condition. Is zero less than five? Yes, zero is less than five. Condition is satisfied. So first number will be copied from source array into destination array because the value of i is zero. So zero will be replaced here. Source zero. It means that the number stored at zeroth index of source. Which number is stored at zeroth index of source? LA1. So that number will be copied into destination whose index is zero. Means it will be copied into the first location of destination block. Now, as you have copied one number, now it's time to increment the index. So I plus plus will be there. So I is zero. Now I becomes one. Is one less than five? Yes, one is less than five. Then same activity is repeated. But this time it is repeated for the number whose index is one. So 22 is copied from source to destination. Again, I plus plus will increment the value of index from one to two. Third number will be copied. Again, it will be incremented by one. Fourth number will be copied. Again, from index will be incremented by one. So from three, index will become four. And 55 will be copied from source to destination. Then it index will try to increment one more time and it will try to become five. Now, when index becomes five, this condition is not satisfied because five is not less than five. Five is equal to five, but five is not less than five. It means that we have done with copying of all five numbers. So the program will exit the loop. So it will come out of the loop and it will go to the next statement. And what is the next statement here? Next statement is while one. While one is a condition and that is always true. Means the program is stuck here. It will execute the statement. Statement is true. Again, it will check the condition. Again, statement is true and this will go on and on. It is as good as the stop statement means we are done with the programming. So we will stop the program by writing while one followed by the semicolon. So this is the program to copy five numbers from internal RAM locations of 8051 microcontroller to another five locations of internal RAM locations of 8051 location. Now, as you are done with the program, now let us simulate the program by using Kill ID. The same program is uh, typed here. First source array is declared and initialized with five number. Destination array is declared. It is having the name destination. For storing the uh, index, one unsigned carry is declared. And this for loop is responsible for copying the source numbers one by one into destination. Let us save the program and let us build the target.
you can see at the bottom that there are no errors now once you come across zero error program then next step is to start running the program so go to debug menu and click start stop debug session so debug session is started now before running the program what should i do i should go to the memory window you can have the you can display the memory window by clicking the view menu and clicking the memory window so at the bottom you can see that the memory window is displayed if nothing is there then you can type 0 followed by colon followed by 0x00 it means that i want to display the contents of internal data memory and from where i want to display the contents so generally in embedded c program the data is stored in bank 1 and bank 1 starts at 08 location so i will put the location as 08 and i will press the enter now as program is not uh, run 8 so 08 memory location onward has nothing stored in now let us run the program and check the output so click the debug menu and click the run and now here you can observe that the locations which were empty now get filled with the numbers now first five locations are stored with number 11 22 33 44 55 so these are the contents of this source array and as i have executed the program the same five locations are copied into the destination array and that destination array is from here onwards 11 22 33 44 55 so these five numbers from this source locations are copied into this destination locations so in this way we can run the program and we can test whether block transfer is completed or not thank you